All right, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to find the centroid of a slanted parallel pipe head. All right, so what do I mean by a slanted parallel pipe head? Well, I want something like this where I've got a square base and then I have a square top up here somewhere. And, you know, they're connected. Just like that. E. Oh, not too bad. All right, so that's my square pillow, slanted parallel pipe it with a square face. Um, and so I will draw axes right here because I think that's the best place for axes. Um, right, right through the center we'll have our XY axis center of this bottom face and coming up here passing through the center of this guy up here we have the Z axis right and that makes for a pretty good thing and you know this has some sort of shadow down here that we don't really have to worry about and somewhere this has got something like a center it's a centroid why because it doesn't have to be in the middle right it, it's got to be somewhere it will be in the middle of this thing because of the way it's built but um, you know you could have a funnier looking shape and, you know and it doesn't have to be in the middle of the shape it, it has to be in the middle of the shape it doesn't have to be in the object right? um, let's see so what do I want to do I'm given this parallel pipe it I have no idea how to spell that. Um, so it has a width and a length, or width and a depth, okay? Let's call them, um, and they're the same, A. Has some sort of height going on here, which is H, all right? And it has a slope. And that slope is um, 2h over a. So I don't remember if that, I figured that out that it had to be that or if that was just a choice of mine. So it could be any of those things. Um, and then this guy's going to have a density function. I forgot about my density function and it's rho z equals rho not prime times z. Uh, that's more important for the next video that I'm going to make, which will be finding the center of mass instead of the um, centroid, right? So, um, for the centroid, I just ignored that, and I just basically do everything as if it was a, um, everything as if rho was uniform, right, instead of changing. So I want to find the centroid. We'll just call it XC, call it X bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, can't call it X bar because X is X has an arrow on top. Uh, let's see. What's what's the first thing I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to draw the figure, which is too late because I already drew the figure. But the first thing you want to do is draw the figure. This isn't in my notes, but this is in a lot of my um, solutions. Right? You'll see. Draw the figure, then figure out the integration limits. Um, so that shouldn't be too difficult, right? So we know that we want Z to be between um, 0 and H. We're okay with that, right? So uh, 0 is less than or equal to Z is less than or equal to H. Uh, we want Y, this thing, or what have I got here? So Y is this way. All right, so actually X is going to be, um, let's see, X is going to be from minus A over two to A over two. And Y will be the same thing at the base, but it'll change, right? It'll move upwards and to the right. So, um, so we're going to have this slope 
2hz over a, right? 2h over a times z minus a over 2, and that's going to move up along this line, say. And then up along this line is 2hz over a plus a over 2, right? So this 2hz over a is just this center line here, right? Um, so this guy's got to be done before, uh, no, this guy has to be done before this one. All right, so we have to keep that integration order uh, fine, and then this other one we don't have to worry too much about at all. So that's how, that's how you know you do the integration limits, is you just kind of sort of try to figure it out. All right, so next I want to find the volume. Yeah, you know. So what I'm going to do to find XC is I'm going to take um, sort of a, a moment. Uh, I'm going to take some sort of moment um, vector and divide it by the volume, right? So for the volume, I just have the triple integral over the volume dV, all right? not going to be the world's most complicated thing to do, right? So I've already written my integration limits. So last thing probably to do is z, right? Um, then maybe this h1, which is 2h over a times z minus a over 2, and then we have 2h over a times z plus a over 2, and then we have just the minus a over 2 to a over 2 for the x. Um, dx, dy, dz. This guy is just a, right? So we just pull that guy out and do a. Bang. Um, this guy, uh, we we do this integral and then we just take this minus that. So we have 2h over a times z minus or plus a over 2 minus um, 2HA times Z minus A over 2, all right? And so that makes life nice and easy because these two are going to cancel and then these two will add up to A anyway. So we didn't really have to worry about the integration limits. I was just fooling. And um, actually, since those guys cancel, uh, we don't have any Z dependence here, so we don't have any z dependence here, so we just have an h there. So we have um, a squared h as our volume. Easy peasy, not a problem. All right. Next, we want to uh, find our moments. Okay. So, like in the x direction, yeah. So the the book uses its own notation. And I'm not sure what it, what, what it would want to do here, so I'm just going to worry about x. So I have the integral over v times x uh, dv, right? In this case, we don't have much of an issue, right? So um, the y and the z are doing their thing, so that's going to be a h. And um, then our integral over x, you know, from minus a over 2 to a over 2, uh, x dx, that's one half a squared, right? So we have um, a h times one half um, times a squared over four minus minus a squared over four, right? Ah, and that's zero. Is that zero? That is zero. Ah. That's a bummer. We could have figured that out already, right? Because it goes from here to here, right? All the way up. So it's all it's always um it's always got just as much towards you as it has away from you. Not much of an issue there. So that uh, X bit is not a huge surprise for you and me. Alright, so let's go to the next moment. Alright. Uh VY. All right, so we do the same thing uh, for y, right? Which means the x integral is the same, so that's just a. 
Now we're going to have to lie low a little bit with this a zero to H thing, right? And do our integral of um, to two H over A times Z minus A over two, two H over A times Z plus A over two times Y dy dz. Okay, so we take the integral of this thing, which is going to be one half of um, the squares, the difference between the squares of these two things. Um, let's see, how much room do I have? Uh, but you can see, you should be able to see, and I don't like all these little terms here, so I'm not going to write it out, that, you know, when you square this and you square that, the um, z squared and the a squared terms cancel, all right? So you only have the um, middle terms, and those add. So you're going to have four times um, this thing times that thing. So it would be two times, but then this two times here, two times there, that's four. So we have four times um, 2h over a times z times a over 2 uh, dz. All right. And so we've really just moved that integral over um, y up one and added a bunch of constants. Okay. Uh, I hope you're okay with that. I'm fine with that. I don't know about you. I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, so these two a's here, they cancel. These two twos cancel. The four comes out and plays with that guy. So we have um, two a h left over, and we have a 0 to h um, z dz, right? So we get another half, so we have a h um, cubed, because we get a z cubed there, and there, there, that's the, there that's the moment in the y direction, not an issue. All right, so that's probably the most complicated one, so we'll do this last one just for um, S's and G's. All right, so let's see what do we have here. So both the X and the Y, they're not going to be affected by this Z being here. So we have an A squared. And then we have an integral um, from zero to H Z D Z, right? Which is going to be um, one half H squared. So we have one half A squared H squared, all right? So those are our moments, and now we're ready to find the centroid. Am I on the screen? I am on the screen. That is awesome. Okay. And that centroid XC is going to be equal to um, VX over V in the X direction. So that is going to be zero. So we don't have to write anything for that. Uh, then we have vy over v in the y direction. So we have a h cubed, right, over um, a squared h in the y hat direction, plus uh, one half a squared h squared over a squared h, uh, which is going to equal, um, okay, I have, 1a left down here and 2h is up here, so h squared over a in the y direction plus 1 half h in the z direction. So that 1 half h in the z direction, 1 half the height, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't come, of it, come as any surprise either, right? Because, you know, there's just as much stuff above, or just as much um, volume above the halfway point as above it, because the um, cross section stays the same size. So the zero in the z direction, nothing really interesting. Y bit, the y bit is a little bit interesting, um, and it's a little bit interesting because you know it, where this centroid is it has to do with um, the height here and the width here and so forth and so on. So that is what I have for you. I am so very happy to have um, spent this time with you. And I hope you're happy to have spent this time with me. 
and I hope you stay around and watch more of these videos and get really, really good at doing these problems. Um, so remember, do try other shapes. Make up a shape for yourself and try it, right? Um, that is how you're going to get good at this stuff, is by trying new and different ways of doing strange and wonderful things with mathematics. All right. See you around. Bye now.